I'm wasting time now. Land's going to know that if they hold out, they're in the old fence scan. And always are down. Mendy wins it again. Cahoos now. Patrick has started really well, but he's quieting down a bit. And now Felipe, that's surely offside. It's a corner. This is nervy. It's getting more and more nervous, I've got to be honest. Egg Betty with the corner now. He's, uh, he's in. It's a, it's a goal. That's it. That's awful marking from us. It's awful. Who's that on the line? A J. Missed it on the line. It's all over. We're going to have to go attacking now. Pfft. Shocking defending from Ois again. All season long, it's cost us. We've conceded 51 goals. And as it stands, we are relegated. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final episode of Voice in Source Season 1 on YouTube. How are you getting on today guys and thank you for joining us. We are back for the Football Manager Save brought to you by Trust Football and the Nordic Football Podcast. And well, Jota Borgson, you might even hear it in my voice, despondent, um, saddened, disheartened, disgusted, whichever words you want to use. That's how Jota Borgson is feeling right now because as you can see in the screen in front of you, all Grita are relegated. Um, we stream the game live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash twitchjustfootball. Uh, thanks to those who joined us, it was a great turnout. Uh, and a lot of you regular watchers of the series tuned in to watch the full 90 minutes. We played a full 90 minute game, second leg of the relegation playoff against Lands Krona Boys. But um, yeah, it didn't go well. And we drew it 2-2. Let's just recap the goals, shall we? We had a 2-0 deficit. Had to win by two clear goals to save our all Svenskan status. But it is not something that we managed to achieve, as we've tended to do this season a lot. Took the lead in the 24th minute. Absolute howler from Tommy Vaiho. What was that? Um, but, well... Key boom with a, you know, a mistake of his own three minutes later, which really, really blew our momentum. It meant from there that Oist needed four goals in the match to go through uh, without any conceding. Made some changes at half-time, 46th minute. Brought on Patrick, the Brazilian. And this was a lovely work move, uh, actually, this goal. And he, there's the Brazilian Patrick to Plana, who grabbed his second of the game. But it was not enough, not good enough from the set piece. And Florin drove a dagger into the heart of every Ois fan. As well as Jota Borgsen himself with that goal to relegate, seal the relegation of Orgolita. So, unfortunately guys, we are down. We are not going to stay in the division. Uh, as I just showed you the table, this is where we finish 14th in the league. Disappointing times. Jota Borgsen has a relegation on the CV now. 27 points. 4 points off. And with 51 goals conceded. Minus 16 goal difference. A very, very disappointing end to what I'd promised at some times to be a good season. Now the aim of this episode is a season debrief. So we're going to wrap up this first season of Oist in Source. Before we do that, just a little bit of news. Uh, and if you could please hit subscribe down below so you can watch uh, future episodes of course but um, yeah, one little piece of news that could be pertinent for next season we had a team meet, we had a board meeting and in that board meeting it was agreed that Jota Borgsen will keep his job uh, although we are very insecure at the moment and the board are disappointed as you saw there there was a promise made and that promise was made by Sebastian Lindbergh, one of the club directors, 
which is five games. We've got five games to get nine points. So we had a board meeting. We were pretty much thought we were going to get sacked. But the board gave us a reprieve and said, you need to get nine points from your first five games next season. So that will be the aim. And if we don't achieve that, we will be sacked in the second division. And our job is still insecure, so who knows, really. We might even still lose the job. But at least we've managed to survive another day, a bit like uh, the Bond films. Um, so let's do the B debrief. Uh, I've been looking into it. Obviously, we've had time, you know, we've had a whiskey. Yotta Borgson's had a whiskey and coke, and he's been able to sort of sit there on the Yotaburg Bridge, think to himself, looking out over the ships, and think to himself... You know, what What could we have done better? What? Where did this season go wrong? Where did it get out of our hands? Why are we down? And so the aim of this episode, we're going to look at five key games. We're going to look at the season as a whole, obviously. Um, quick analysis of the goals and what we did well and what we did badly. Then we're then going to look at five key games. I'm going to show you the highlights of five key games that we think, you know, really decided the season. Then we're going to look at five good games. You know, five games that brought a smile to the always fans faces and gave us hope for the future to look forward to then we're going to turn it towards players we're going to look at the five players of the season Jutta Borgson is going to choose his five players of the season and then five who we can look out for next season as well we'll take we'll pick five players that we think you know you want to look out for in the second division next year obviously there's going to be a big upheaval in terms of the squad players wanting to leave um, but we'll look at five that you might want to keep an eye on and then we'll look at five players probably on the way out and maybe the last time you'll be seeing them on Ois in Source. So let's get into it and let's start with five turning points of the season. Now I think the first thing to note on this is we've been looking at the, we've been doing the analysis, we've done a complete deep dive onto this season. But look at this statistic, just one thing that really does sum up the entire season. Look at that. Goal, pit, goal times of the match. Unbelievable. 76 to 90 minutes. And then 90 plus minutes. We conceded 22 goals this season in the last 15 minutes of games. Now that is really the story of season one of Oi Sinsors, to be honest and our season in the top division of Sweden that sums it all up 11 goals scored well 12 goals scored in the 90th minute uh, or 76 to 90th minute but 22 conceded and that is really really what went wrong and if you look at the first 45 minutes Ois were very very good you know we usually were better off than the opposition you know 10 goals scored 5 conceded in the opening 15 six, 10 versus 9 in the opening 16 to 30 16 to 13 in the opening 31 to 45 you know the first half we were always good in the save we always took the team, took the game to opponents but whether it was stamina whether it was just lack of nows whether it was substitutions maybe whether it was just not having a great enough squad to see out the job maybe inexperienced the youngest team in the league don't forget maybe that was it but whatever it was those last 15 minutes really 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 cost us and we've picked out five games that sum it all up that we'll just show you now quickly number one as we debrief the season Hammerby away one of the first big games in Jotta Borgsen's career in the Allsvenska and the top division of Sweden so as you remember yet yeah, here we are conceded the first goal Came back into the game through Lina, cross to and Wusu 1 1. Equalised in Stockholm. Oppo and Gwet, one of his, this was one of his best games actually. Went 2 1 up. With an own goal there. Playing very nice, of course, before half time. So, you know, as we've just shown you there, we tend to do well in the first half of games. And then, after going 2-1 up, we even went 3-1 up. Timmy stopped Hermansen just before half-time. But could we hang on to it? 
No, we could not. 67th minute. And they're back in it. And then 75th minute. Goal for Hammerby. And then to rub it in. 78th minute. Another goal for Hammerby. And a 4 3 defeat. And that really did set the tone for this season in that sense of just losing games that we really should have got something from 3-1 up to 4-3 down. Game number two, Bromer Poikin are away. Again, went 1-0 down in this one, which is different, so obviously didn't do anything in that first half. Went down to 10 men in the first half though, as you can see, Makumbu sent off. 88th minute, Jokarez back into the game, one all. Surely, job done. We're taking a point from a difficult game with 10 men. You would think to yourself, two minutes left. You'd be thinking wrong. 89th minute, a minute later. And it's 2-1 Sana, 90th minute for Bruno Poikina. 2-1 defeat. Game three. Bickle hacking away. And another heartbreaker. 92nd minute after playing very well you know against the team that finished in the top four in the league you know good solid team with a you know really good squad they beat us 3-0 at home don't forget in the last game of the season but away from home did so well for our fans until the 92nd 93rd minute 1-0 another point gone Danny Avdic heartbreaker game number four and this one well this one was more of a turning point in the sense that it really started to mark potentially the beginning of the end. You know, we'd look quite good in general so far in the season, but this game, just after the autumn period, really, really was a bit of a shocker. And we're not even going to show you all the goals because we don't have time. But a 5-1 defeat at home to Odebrook. Absolute nightmare for Jotterborgs and Antois at home as well. Uh, a mid-table team, or the blue, you know, really not even that good of a team. I don't know what happened in this game, but it kind of some it started to just show that you know that we had serious problems in defence, uh, which was our downfall in the end in the season. Even though we came back into it one all with Patrick, you know they went straight up the other end and scored, and you know from their 34th minute, 37th minute they score. And then in the last sort of uh, you know half an hour of the game, they score three goals and we lose 5-1. Big problems it started to signify and, and you know showed that trouble was a brewing. And then probably the last game that sums it all up really, this was the game where I really its spirits did start to drop here. EF Core away, our biggest rivals. Look at that, I mean 41st minute a player sent off. You know, we're in our own stadium, don't forget we ground share with them. All you got to do is see it out and get the point, get the point, get the point. We played a, we played a highly structured defensive game for 90 minutes, just trying to get the point. And then 90th minute, they break with 10 men to win the derby, sending their fans crazy. Gutting. Absolutely gutting. This one was live on Twitch. You'll see Jota Borgson was really, really upset by that game. And if you look at that, that there, that there alone, from positions where we you know, could have got results, you're looking at five, six points there that have already cost us basically our, our, our status because we, we've gone down by four points. I mean, those five games alone, that's three points probably at Hammerby. Let's say one point at be at Bromer Poikina. You know, another point at Beckel Hacken. Okay, Odebro would have lost that anyway. Maybe one point at uh, EF Core. That's six points. Six point, those six points would have kept us up in the league if we'd have held on in those games. Um, which we should have really 3-1 up and, and, and three late goals. Three 90th minute goals. And then one thing we want to look at, yeah, <clears throat> which also sums up the season. 
look at this action zones from the game. How can a lower division team, Landscore and Boys, dominate midfield like this? You know, that is a question mark for Jutta Borgsen and something we're really, really going to think long and hard about. Look at the action zones as well. We've done real deep digging in this episode into where we've gone wrong. You know, this is a game we had to win. We played 90 minutes of it on Twitch. And look at the heat maps. Look at where we've got the ball. Nowhere, really. Little bit in midfield, little bit out wide, little bit out front, nowhere in the box. Look at where they've got the ball. Offensive areas, offensive areas. All that heat map. Much better. Better in possession. More of the ball. You know, more shots on target. This is a game we had to win. 53% possession. So it really does tell you that, you know, although we were very unlucky in the first leg, don't forget we conceded a penalty and scored nine goal in that first leg and had a very, very blatant disallowed goal offside. But ultimately, when it was at home in front of our own fans, we did not deliver in those areas as the action zones say. Now, let's look at five memorable games before we all start crying, because I, I know I'm tempted to start crying there. <laughs> so, five games that we'll remember <clears throat> and look back on fondly. Game number one, Degafors at home. Second home game of the season, of course, Malmo was our first home game. But yeah, a nice first ever win in Osvenskan for Jota Borgsen and Ois uh, back in the league. And it gave us some hope. Lovely finish from Lucas Fernandez, who might be someone we won't be seeing much of in the future. We're still thinking about him and his future. And then 2 1, that's uh, sorry, 2 0. Armit Hodzic, a set piece which was nice. We didn't score too many set pieces. Not enough for my liking this season. And although we conceded, we did get the 2 1 win. First ever win in Jota Borgsen's top division history. Game number two, 3 0 win against Ostersunds. This was a game where we thought, well, you know, maybe it's time. Maybe we're going to start really dominating um, teams at home. Maybe we can do something in this league. Maybe we can be somebody. Nice, you know, sunny atmosphere. It was in the middle of the summer. Great atmosphere in Gothenburg. Fans were out drinking their beers. Loving the weather. Oppert and Gwet. He likes the summertime because he didn't play well for the rest of the season, to be honest. Uh, he enjoyed He had a very good first half of the season. Great assist there. Taking the game to Ostersunds. Some really nice football. Timmy Stott Hermanson there. Alexander Svensson, the 19 year old. And Wusu got put in quit again there with the goal. Really great form from him. And then, 76 minutes. This time we actually held on. And didn't concede. And Johan Anderson with a lovely goal from outside the box. The centre back. A lovely, lovely little win and a fond memory for Ois fans. Now another game, Degafors. I've got to say, we did the double over these guys and they got relegated with us. And this has to be my game, my personal game of the season. Patrick into Jokerez. Fantastic finish, 1-0 away from home. This game we played a structured counter-attacking game. It was a really, really big win. We couldn't afford to lose the game. We had to win it, really. And look at this counter-attack. Jokerez, this game was on YouTube. And if you listen back to it or watch it back, Jota Borgson going absolutely mad when Timmy Stolt Hermanson buried it. A ruthless counter-attack from Moise. Uh, Christopher Lina with that brilliant cross. He had a great season for us. Really good player. Really enjoyed him. And although Degafors scored, we held on for a massive, what we thought at the time was a massive 2 1 win. And then the biggest of all games. Biggest win in the Otto Borgsen's history. Orgony to 5. Hammerby, the mighty Hammerby. Nil. Now I don't know where this one came out from. It was a counter-attacking masterclass. Victor Jokerez opened the scoring. And we were just ruthless this day. Fantastic memory. And the only game really where we 
completely dominated. Maybe the Ostersons game that we just showed you, but this was probably the only other game where we really, really dominated a team. Carson to Lucas Fernandez to Lina. Lovely football from Ham from Ois. And Fernandez to Oppo and Guet. And this was I think this was Oppo and Guet's last goal of the season. Which says a lot to be honest. And then we'll just show you one more of these five goals. A ruthless counter-attack again from Ois. Victor Yoker is skipping past players for fun. And Fernandez bagged his hat trick. A brilliant, brilliant game. And probably the game of the season for all fans that they will remember for years to come beating the mighty Hammerby. Five. Nil, and then a personal game that I thought was really good as well was Geffle again. We beat them two nil. This was another must-win game, but I think one thing this showed me really is we didn't win that many games. You know, looking back on the best games, there weren't many, and three of them were against teams that finished below us. So you know, it tells it tells you a lot. We didn't manage to win enough big games. This one was important. Played it live on Twitch. Soren reeks with a lovely free kick. We had our problems with him, but that was stupendous, as the commentary said. And then another set piece, Olivo, the new Argentinian signing to Begovic, out to Reeks, to Lucas Fernandez, 2-0. Those were the five best games of the season for Boys. Now, as we do this debrief, you know we're, we're going, we're ending the season now. But let's pick our players of the season. So here are our five players of the season as selected by Jota Borgson. Five players that have really made this save enjoyable in season one. I'll count them down, I think. Because in number five, we have success on Wusu, Mr. Success. Signed him for 130k. You know, one of our biggest signings of this, that uh, season, 2020 season. Midfielder, really, really good. You know, worth 500k now, so you can see he's gone up by 500% in his value. Good stats, 19 games, three goals, three assists, two player of the matches, and an all-round really solid player in that centre of midfield. He added a lot, although he was a bit ropey towards the end of the season. Then he does love a yellow card, <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, 10 yellow cards in 19 games, an absolute disgrace in some ways. But one thing you got to say about him is he gave it his all I mean he loves Ois now his favourite club Ois but he does want to leave and he wants to leave because of, the, because of the relegation and there's probably a good chance he will leave so we may well have seen the last of success in Wusu but it might be one season short and sweet but he's been a great servant to the club and did his best with a great average rating number four Christopher Lina the unsung hero now he doesn't get many plaudits this guy he's our vice captain but he often took to the captain's armband because Patrick Hopkins the American didn't play much he's getting old and when he came into the team he never let us down 26 games one goal three assists usually as a centre-back or as a right back you saw his cross there against Degafors to Timmy Stolt 6.89 rating 73% tackles one 70% pass completion rate decent dribble percentage just all round solid dedicated hard working professional can play in multiple positions you know he's an oist man through and through we got him on a free this was his fourth season with the club now he's made you know coming up to 100 appearances for the club 82 appearances Christopher Lina is a man that doesn't get enough love and he will definitely be staying if I can have my way for next season you know, look at that leadership, look at the natural fitness, you know, he's a good crosser of the ball, we really, really missed him in that last uh, game against Lanscorn, he was suspended, and we missed his crossing big time, big work rate, big determination, I love him, unsung hero, and he is number four. Number three, Victor Jokerez, where is he? Here he is. What can we say about this guy? Five goals. Two assists, one player of the match, 6.95 average rating in 17 starts and 8 sub-appearances. Didn't really expect so much from him to be honest. 
you know, we signed him for 150k last season, didn't play too much, six games, but this year, 23 appearances, come into the team and improved, and he's become a really, really good player. Played him in different positions, on the right or up front, and of course, he scored some vital goals for us at vital times, and you have to say, he's been very good, and at 22 years old, there's a lot to come from him. Dribbling, finishing, first touch, natural fitness, pace, acceleration. Only problem with him is he went off the boil a bit towards the end of the season. You know, look at that. Didn't score a goal from the Hammerby game till the end of the campaign. Didn't get an assist either, which was a bit of a letdown to be honest. And he would have maybe been higher on this list if he'd done that. Question is now, will we be able to keep him? Because Halmstad won him. There will be clubs who look at him probably in the winter. Is it the last we've seen of Victor Jokeres? Okay, he couldn't save us, but he did have a good season overall. Well done to Victor Jokeres. Number two on the list. Timbo. Timmy Stolt Hermansen. One of our players of the season for sure. Oise Academy. Although he came from the second division WG as a child, but came to Oise in 2016. He's been with us since he was 16 years old he's wanted by clubs now already you know Kalmar sniffing around now that, now that we've been relegated clubs will sniff around him Nor shopping wanted him big clubs in Osvenskan 17 games starts 5 goals 3 assists scored 1 penalty player of the match once and 6.82 rating and Mr Timmy Stop. I mean he's played 59 games for us now 14 goals 10 assists he just continues to get better and better. Stepped up to a new level this season. He's only 20 still, don't forget. Um, don't believe the hype because his stats aren't great. You know, don't don't be fooled by the timid looks. Timmy Bo Stolt is a very, very good player in the making. He's had a good season for us. He came up with some really important goals. The Degaforce game, some important assists. The big, big question now for always, can we keep Timmy Stolt Hermanson at this football club? because it's, I think it could be a tough ask and that's something we'll have to look at you know he loves Jutta Borgson he enjoys playing for the club but at the end of the day if money comes in for him will we be able to resist and I'm pretty sure money will come in for him so let's keep an eye on that one but number one on the list player of the season for Ois in the mind of Jutta Borgson the manager is this guy Batista F. Mendy. Absolute rock. Trained by your former man, Johan Hammer. He used to play for Ois. Trained him up before he moved to Slavia Prague. Taught him the ropes when he moved, first moved to Sweden as a young kid, 19 year old teenager, 18 year old even. Came into the team last season and was a vital part of us getting promoted. 19 games, 7.04. And this season he's just gone from strength to strength. 30 games, 6.99 rating, 3 player of the match awards, 2 goals, just an absolute unit at the back of defence. Wins headers, wins tackles. 55% pass completion rate needs to probably improve in the future. 80% of tackles won. I mean that is obscene. You know, just an all round really really good player. Wanted by a lot of clubs all season long. Leeds United watching him, Huddersfield Town watched him. You know, Arlison now won him, Kalmar won him, Nantes won him in France. He was a former Nantes man, so they won him back. A real, real solid player. And not only that, he's been inducted into the OIS best ever 11, according to our supporters. So that sums it all up, really. He's done well enough to be one of our best ever players. There's the list. Some of them have left, of course. Some of them are still here. But Batista Mendy fully deserves his place in that team. And there's our end of season awards, the official awards, just in case you wanted to know. That Reeks free kick that you saw was our goal of the season. The Wusu signing of the season, Mendy young player of the season, and the fans voted for success in Wusu as player of the season. But JF Jotterborgsen's player of the season is Batista Mendy. And so that's the top five. Now before we wrap up, of course, I want you to let us know who you think was the be your best player of the season. Who did you enjoy watching on the save? Leave us a comment below. Who should we you know, keep? Who should we get rid of? Uh, 
please hit subscribe and of course uh, follow us on Twitter at Just Football or at Nordic Footpod. Listen to the podcast. Um, but yeah, before we wrap it up, looking ahead to next season, as we put this one in the books 2020, who are the players to watch for next season? Let's have a quick look. Now we know that we're going to lose some players this winter. You know, winter's going to be a cold, long winter, I think, for Jota Borgson. You know, with job is still insecure and I think there's going to be a lot of people sniffing around. But let's just look at five players that I think could play an important part of Ois in the near future. Number one. In no particular order this, but anyway, Sicaria Diallo. Signed him in the summer. Played one, two games, but didn't really look ready for us, to be honest, in first team level. But keep an eye out for this guy because... He's joined from Caen in France. He's only 21, Frenchman, but he's got some decent stats there. And I'm looking to develop this guy, you know. Looks like a bit of a poacher. A lot of things he can improve there. Look at the cons. You know, selfish player. He's got a lot of work to do professionally. Needs to improve certain things, but got a little bit of a feeling that he could be a good one for us in the future. So, Zakari Diallo, keep an eye out for him. He will feature more prominently next season. I'm quite sure of that. Number two, Adam Anderson. Now, you saw in the highlights of that Landskrona game an absolute howler from our goalkeeper, Ricardo Kiboom, the Dutchman. Now, he's been very good. You know, we mentioned at the beginning of the series that he always talks about Edwin van der Sar. But uh, one thing about Adam Anderson is he's... he's um, He's going to have competition next season, Kiboom, sorry, because Adam Anderson, the 20-year-old from our academy, he looks good to go. Now, we've loaned him out a few times, loaned him out last season, and he did well. And we loaned him out again to Dal Kurd in the second half of this season, in the second division, and he got three clean sheets, 7.08 rating. Arsenal came to watch him a few times. And I look at these stats of the way, he looks very, very good, and I think, to be honest, I think he is now ready. You know, we've been waiting for him to train him up. We've been giving him experience. You know, he's gone off and got 30 plus games. And don't forget, we've been relegated now, so we'll be playing at that level. He'll be fully comfortable with it. He is going to really, really challenge for the first team goalkeeper spot. This could be his chance now. Maybe it's time to throw in Adam Anderson. Keep an eye on him because next season could be his breakout year. Then we've got Alexander Svensson, number three. Now, you've seen him a lot already this season because he's played 10 games, 10 starts, 6.77 rating, not bad, decent pass completion rate, 75%. 19-year-old, and he's a Swedish under-19 international. Another one from the Ois Academy. Don't forget this save has been all about the academy, training them up, selling them on, or trying to keep them if we can, but invariably they get sold, and he's already wanted now, Kalmar sniffing around him, which will be an issue, you know, we've put a 1 million asking price on him. But he, look out for him next season because he will get into the first team. You know, if success in Wuzu leaves, there's an open spot there in midfield. Look at the stats. Natural fitness, 18. Balance, 16. You know, teamwork, 15. Stamina, 14. Free kick taking, 14. Technique, 12. First touch, 12. This kid is looking like the business. We held him back a little bit. You know, he played, he played a lot of games in the early part of the season. And then we sort of eased him off towards the end of the season. Obviously, if... He was on international duty for one or two games with the under-19s. But look at that confident face. He looks proud of himself. Born in 2001, next season, he will be one of the ones we look towards to get us promoted. If we can keep him, of course. That's the caveat. And then two more. Thomas Janssen. Now this 17-year-old, look at his scruffy hair. You know, he's a bit of a, a, bit of a rebel, this guy. He's got the potential to be a quality player, according to the scouts. He's only 17. He will be the next man to come through and get maybe his chance. We gave him a few games in friendlies. Uh, played a couple of friendlies towards the end of the season just to rotate the team when we had long breaks, international breaks. And look at his performances. First friendly came in from the under-19 squad. Nobody knew who he was. Nobody even knew his name. And he scored two assists, registered two assists. Really, really good performance stats. And then we played another game a week later, and he scored two goals. So he definitely showed that he's hungry and ready. Uh, 
now to be challenging for a first team place. Now don't get me wrong, it will be a bit of a challenge for him, he's got a lot to learn. Uh, stats are still a little bit weak technically, but Mr Tommy Jansen, you know, maybe he's the next one off the production line. We've given him a new contract until 2023, so we've given him a three year deal to improve himself, you know. Low wages, you know, lock him down. Thomas Janssen is someone that will start featuring more prominently next season and let's see how he does. Can he make it at Oys? And then the final one that you need to look at, there's quite a few others, but Joseph Lindbergh. We talked about him a few times. How will he improve next season? The 18-year-old from our academy. Is he the next Patrick? That's what they've said on the teammate comparison list, similar to Patrick, which if he is, that would be some potential. Again, he's a Swedish under-19 international now. Valued at 18k, we managed to tie him down. Got him to sign a contract in the end. Played one start for us and he's got decent ratings. And we think he can be competing in the first team next season. So that is the five to watch. And just a little mention, by the way, for Antoine Makumbu because he will start the game. If you watch the, uh, I think it was episode nine, we played the Swedish Cup against AFC Eskilstuna, he came in and scored and got an assist in that cup game, you can see there, 8.5 rating, even though we lost it 5-2, so he will definitely compete for centre midfield places next season as well, he's already wanted by a few clubs just on loan, but uh, that's 6 to watch I guess, but um, yeah, that's the ones to watch for next season, now as we come to the end of this series and we come to the end of season 1, we come to the end of the line for some certain players I think so before we wrap up the show our final stop here let's just look at players who will probably be on their way out and that you might be saying goodbye to now number one Oppo Nguetz he's already handed in the transfer request when we uh, held a team meeting with the squad and said listen next season we want to get promoted straight away and he was one of the four players, the four rebels, who said, I don't plan to be here next season and I don't really care about promotion. So we transfer listed him straight away. No time for that. He's got a release clause, 770 grand. <clears throat> and already, Dalker, uh, sorry, Viking won him in Norway. Dioguard and Big Club in Stockholm want him as well. Now, I'm really disappointed with Putin I don't think he really did it. His last game, his last you know, assist for us was against. ASC Eskilstuna in the cup ages ago again another player who his last goal and assist was against Hammerby really really went missing in games that we needed him look at the two playoffs 6.5 6.6 just simply not good enough no real input on those games um, and I've got to be honest with you he's our highest paid player as well and I think if you can't produce it in those sort of matches and you've got the arrogance to still want to be around just don't think it's going to work for him. You know, he's a good player, don't get me wrong. Maybe we didn't play him in his best position at times. You know, we rotated him, but I just don't see a future for him. We're going to have to cut the wage bill. He's got a saleable, he's a saleable asset. If we can get 500 grand minimum, he will probably leave. So say goodbye probably to Oppo and Gwet. I'll be very surprised if he's here with us next season. Number two. Now you already know about Ruben Gatta leaving and good riddance to be honest. Scored the own goal that pretty much relegated us and really went off the boil in the second half of the season once his transfer was announced. I don't think he concentrated. Um, but number two in terms of who might leave next, I think Lucas Fernandez, One of the key men on this save. We talked about him so many times, but we've transfer listed him now. He's another one who probably wants to leave. A lot of interest already. Helsingborg made a bid for him. Jerv in Norway, Hamstad, Osters. So there is interest. But I think, you know, he wants to leave already. He's already complaining. He scored a hat trick for us. Six, six goals in total. He's a good player, but 26 now. You know, he's only played one season for us. Just really never could quite get a tune out of him, whether it was on the wing, whether it was up front. He missed a lot of chances. You know, went missing in games. Sometimes he showed up, but. All in all, just flattered to deceive a little bit, I think. And bearing in mind we got him for free, I think it'll be time to cash in if we can get a good 500k for it, or 200k, whatever it will be. You know, we'll take it. 
So say goodbye to Lucas Fernandez potentially. You might not be seeing him again on this save. Then we talked about successive Musus. Well, you know, won't dwell on him too long, but I think it's probably the last we'll see of Nwusu. I'd be very surprised if he's back for pre-season. He's a very good player. He's too good for the second division. Still in his prime 26. Very much doubt we'll keep him, although I'd love to keep him. But I do not see it happening. So that's three. Sebastian Carlson, another one. One of the four rebels who came out and said he doesn't plan to stick around. Which is quite disappointing, to be honest. But I suppose when you look at it, I mean, he loves Ois. But when you look at it, it's been with us for now five seasons. Got us promoted. Look at the average ratings. Sensational. Never below seven. So you've got to admit, he's very, very, very good. Uh, in that midfield, used to play for Inter Milan. And it probably is time we part ways now, <clears throat> if we're honest. You know, does he want a sixth season at Ois when he's getting on a bit now, 29? Probably not. I'm not going to transfer this to him, but if a club bids for him, we probably won't stand in his way because he, he is a good enough player probably to play in Osvenska. And he had injury problems. I think that really held him back. I only played 11 games, two goals, one assist. Eight yellow cards, which is phew, a bit of a worry. 6.95 average. But um, he's our number seven. He's been a great stalwart for the club. I've got a lot of respect for him. And I think even though I'm disappointed at his, his, his reaction, out of respect, we will let him go if a reasonable bid comes in. And then the final players, I think we're saying goodbye to, potentially, even though it hurts me to say this, and it will hurt any always fan watching, Batista Mendy. I'll be very, 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 very surprised if we keep this player past pre-season. He's been wanted for so long by clubs. We've put 1.8 million asking price on him. He's worth 350k right now, but let's be honest, he's too good for the second division. I mean, we've got championship clubs looking to bid for him, Leeds United. Can we keep Batista Mendy? I very, very much doubt it in the second division. It will be gutting to leave him. Now, the only thing to note is that he does love Jota Borgson, and he is still enjoying playing for the club. Now, don't forget, at the beginning of the season, he was very moody and didn't want to be at the club at all. Um, but we've managed to turn him round. We've praised him a lot, you know. We've managed to we've built a, we've built a very nice rapport with him, you know. And he started to sort of maybe turn, and he's enjoying the club now. But let's be honest: once clubs start bidding for him, it's going to be very hard. And I think the board might even push him out of the club because the board have said that they will. They've injected a lot of money into the board. You know, we mentioned we were in debt, and now we're suddenly out of it because they've put in about 100, nearly nearly a million uh, into the club. So, I think it might be the last we see of Batista Mendy, big Batista, which would be really, really gutting. But thank you for your service, Batista. And let's see in pre season if we still have you in the squad. And that is it now for this season, season one of Voice in Source. I really appreciate everyone who's followed and everyone who's subscribed. And for the comments, ADT, I want to say thank you to him. Uh, for every single episode making a comment and you know cheering us on meat man soccer I want to say thank you to you as well cheering us on keep him wanted by chelsea that's a mad one isn't it um but yeah thanks to everyone else as well who's left comments who's watched who's enjoyed it uh, a bit of a longer episode this one but it's a season debrief we've got to look towards what what's going to happen now for next season it's time for your to rebuild we've got five games to save the job when we return, it will be pre-season, so we'll, we'll play through pre-season now. We'll play through uh, the winter. We'll look at the transfer window, see what happens. We've got a few transfers coming in already. We've got bids in for some players. Seaman Scrab uh, could be a good one. Stenmark will join us it's very soon. Obviously, Armin Hodzic, he's off. He'll be leaving. And a few others, obviously, on loan. Ruben Gatta will be gone. Patrick Hopkins out of contract. So it will be a very different-looking squad when you return for season two of Voice and Source. And of course, the bigger question is, will the Otto have a job? Will we still be in the job or will the board maybe come in and, you know, pull the rug from under our, you know, our feet? We will see. But uh, that's all we've got time for now. Thank you so much for tuning in for this longer debrief season, you know, end of season debrief. We will be back. The aim next season will be to get promoted. We'll see how we get on. So... 
all we can say for now is thanks for tuning into Always In Source. Really appreciate it. Hope to see you for next season. We have failed our mission to stay out by four points, but as we always say, as the Terminator once said, we'll be back. Thanks a lot. Thanks for tuning in. I've been Jonathan Yotta Borgson, the manager of Ois. <laughs> Take care of yourself. And goodbye.